Gun Maverick have any kind of ventilation inside the ship? Because, you know, the wife and I watched it last night. <laughs> and it, it's swamp ass every time. Every I get the volleyball scene and all that. So you're supposed to sweat there. But inside that damn ship, there was no ventilation. Will there be ventilation in Maverick? Will there be ventilation tonight for the Miami Heat? In the well, it, it's interesting how, how sweating is the theme of your show with the star today. And, and the Heat are sweating right now. And, and you're always sweating in an elimination game. And remember, Big O, this is their first elimination game. We saw yeah. what happened to the Hawks against them, elimination game, done. We yes. saw what happened to them with 76ers when Sixers were elimination game, done. But yep. Boston won an elimination game in Milwaukee, won an elimination game at home against the Bucks to advance. So, so we'll see if the Heat are up to the moment at this level. And it's not easy. So far this postseason, even Dallas survived an elimination game, a game four at home. But the road's a different character. And I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little tangential here in our Accurate Penguin Pines report. I remember the last time the Heat were in this situation in Boston. You do too. Tw uh, 2012, Heat were down 3-2. LeBron James was about to get Eric Spolster fired, but that's another story for another day. I'm sitting there at TD Garden where the Heat bench uh, is, and sitting next to me is Pat Riley. And I'm going to be honest with you. And I turned to Pat and I said, are you nervous? He goes, nah, we got this one. And you know what? When you have LeBron James on your side and you right. know he's going to go for 40-something, it's a lot easier. That's yeah. the difference. There is not a player tonight. I would love to tell you, hey, well, go because – Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Unless okay. you're in San Antonio and you sweat him out. Okay. All right, so, ah, so you want to turn off the ah, air conditioning. Ah, yeah, okay, so you're coming full circle. Come on, you know what? The that's thing skills, is, baby. That's radio skills. Come well, on. Exactly, and we were there, and that was awful. And I honestly thought, I was sitting next to Doris Burke in San Antonio. Again, we're just getting completely tangential. Big O's talking about 2014 finals. AC goes out first game in San Antonio. Heat are up big. LeBron starts cramping. And, and, and I, I and this was not the COVID gun. atmosphere back then. You just thought you were getting sick. And I was dying. And I took my sport coat off and I turned to Doris Burke and I go, is it hot in here? And then I looked around and everyone was fanning themselves with their game program in the seats. And only then did I realize I probably wasn't running 110 degree fever and the air conditioning is out. So, okay, that's one way to do things. But again, not home court advantage. The Heat can do that to the Celtics on Sunday if they make it back. Big old, my problem is this. In that 2012 game six, when Pat Riley was so confident, he knew he had LeBron James on his side. Let me ask you this. Based on what you've seen through the first five games of this series, do the Heat have that alpha who is healthy to do no. that? Yeah, you, you you killed me at the end there. You just threw the caveat. Healthy. Um, yeah, no. it's uh, they, th And that's why I don't feel good about tonight. It's just Struess is injured. PJ's injured. Uh, Jimmy's injured. Uh, Tyler's injured. It, it's just, and they, and they don't have enough stars as it is. They're not a star-driven team. Perfect. You know, we, we kind of, in fact, we kind of sit here with the argument, is Jimmy a star? Is he not? Is he just an all-star, not a superstar? Tier but two. He, but, 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 damn it, he plays like a superstar. You know what I mean? I but right now, he's he not, he's not healthy. He can't. he can't be that guy. When Jimmy isn't driving to the hole, you know he's injured. Because Jimmy's the most fearless mofo on the planet, and and plus he's got those vice grips his hands, so he can always go into the hole with no problem. And he wasn't even doing it the right. last couple games because he's so injured he can't even play his game, which is really important. And so I would love to feel confident about tonight. I'd love to convince myself, but they just don't have enough stars from the get go. Yes. And right now, the only star that they have is broken. I, I just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I you just know, Bigo, when you have an ensemble team, the most important thing is you can say we can survive an absence because we have two or three others. Right. But when the two or three others also are injured, exactly. I hate to put it this way, but you are just completely screwed. So yes. in other words, if you were to tell me Kyle Lowry has the hamstring, hell, he had the hamstring seven games and the Heat won all seven with Gabe Vincent starting. Why? They had Tyler Hero. They had Jimmy Buckler. They had Max Strews playing well. They had Bam Adebayo playing well. That's PJ. the thing. But you take one guy out, and you don't have option two or option three, Lowry or Hero. That's where you get in trouble. And it's all cat and mouse. The Heat right now are not don't even have Jimmy Butler on their injury report. 
Big O, you saw what he's looked like the last two and a half games. He's so wait, not out a half aren't, game on Saturday. He violating, uh, aren't he violating? No, no, because uh, you're saying a player is either questionable, probable, doubtful, or out. Jimmy Butler is playing. What the injury report doesn't have on it is this. What percentage is Jimmy Butler? So the Miami Heat basically are saying that 50% Jimmy Butler will be on the court 100% of the time tonight. That's what they're saying. So the injury report sort of can lie that way. Meanwhile, you have Tyler Hero at questionable 50-50. He's not 50-50. He has that groin injury. He hasn't done a damn thing now in five days. I would find that very unlikely. The Heat are going lighter on their shoot around this morning. They're going to do it at their team hotel instead of the arena for that reason. So they're limping to the finish line. And it's sad. And we've seen it. And the difference is, you know, it's just this past Monday, we looked at the Panthers' end of the season. They were healthy, they were whole, that's who they were, and they weren't good enough. We will go into this offseason, and it's great for our Acura Pembroke Pines reports every Monday and Friday throughout the offseason when you can go to me. But Ira, instead of ripping up this team, what if? What if Jimmy was healthy? What if Kyle was healthy? What if, you know, if, if Tyler was healthy? And then we'll get into the ages also, because I got to tell you, Big O, I'm starting to do my postseason capsules. I'm not a quitter, but you got to be prepared because I am a Boy Scout, and I'm getting ready for that. And when I type in some of these damn ages, <laughs> and I got this guy's turning 37, and this guy's 36, and Jimmy's turning 33, and UD is turning 42 next month, you say to yourself, is there something bigger here about the injuries? You know what it's like. Big, big O, you know like what you were like in your 20s. Hell, did you stretch? No, you just got out there. In your 30s, right. did you warm up? No, you just played. Then you turned 40. Then you yeah. turn 50. And I oh think that's gosh. part of it. Can you survive a hundred plus game NBA season with so many players who are so old? And you and I, every Monday and Friday, you'll be talking about that on the Acura Pembroke Pines offseason report, which hopefully won't be on Monday. Yeah, uh, probably won't be. We'll probably move it to Tuesday. You know that. Um, uh, you, 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 you were anticipating that. Anyway, um, what's it called? Um, I thought the Lowry deal was going to be a bad deal on the back end, and it ended up being a bad deal in the in the beginning. Uh, that that doesn't bode well for me because I was hoping this was the season that you could really take advantage profit off of, yeah. of of these guys, and now you're going to add another year, and that becomes a real chat. And you know, listen, we'll get into that after this whole thing. But then you you've got some tough decisions that you're going to have to make. And you've got some young guys that you certainly want to maybe keep. And you, you're going to have to make some moves to try to accommodate all of this. So that's the other thing about all of this, that, you know, the, these gambles with some of these older contracts, um, they may not end up paying off the way you thought they were going to pay off. Or do you say Kyle Lowry missed all that time due to personal reasons, a ton of time, for a very bad family situation? And maybe mm. if he was with the team, and he was training, and he was working out. Look, the Heat are great with their training work. You know that over the years. Sure, they get sure. more out of you. Zoe, with the kidney illness and his age, was able to persevere. So maybe that's the hope. But, this he, is, took care this of, is, but he took care of himself. This guy does not take well, care of but himself. But this guy wasn't around the Heat enough that he always could take care of himself. So maybe without that family situation, he was gone for a month. Maybe without that, and the Heat could be on him constantly, and Pat Riley could be around him all the time. You know, it's like it's like you and me, Big O. Right, we go. Does he does he want that? That's the part I, I don't, I don't give a crap what he, he wants when I'm paying him thirty plus million dollars a year. Okay, Big o, well, here's let, me, let me ask you something. Sure. Let me ask you. I'm glad you asked that because, okay. okay, when I was a beat guy, I knew Hardaway had a weight clause. I knew Hardaway had an assist to turnover ratio clause. Because remember, we would walk in the locker room and bro. Tim Hardaway wanted to grab that box score right away to make sure. I believe it was two and a half to one, right? It had to it be. Was, it was close to three to one. Two and a half to one might be right. Yeah, though, yeah. I, I think it was two and a half to one that he had to have. And every day he, he'd look at it to make sure because he had like a million, million and a half dollar signing. Oh, big, yeah, especially was, in those days, money is compared yeah, to today. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But enormous. And, and so I know he had weight clauses for other people and all of that. But you already signed this guy. And. That maybe there was no weight clause in there. So how and, do you... And I'm sure there wasn't, and I highly doubt that Kyle Lowry ran the heat conditioning test either. No one's that's, been able to tell me that. That's what I'm saying. So but, how, okay, how here's, can you here's how, push here's a guy how, because, that's never been like that his whole career? Here's is he going to be willing to work out now? Because I mean, you and I have both been through this. We have both been on diets, and we both have had our wives look at us at times and going, do you really need to eat that right now? 
If Kyle Lowry's around the Heat for all six months of the season and around Pat Riley, Pat Riley will be like you and me and our wives when you go for the bag of chips and they go, do you really need that Ira? Do you really need that Orlando? Do you really need that Kyle? So I think being around the team will have an impact also. Also, I do think this will impact things, Big O. Players have pride. And Kyle has been humbled because he has looked, what's the word here, awful yeah. last game. Oh. No points. No assists. He, he, he looks like Gonzalo Higuain. It, it, it does. It resonates. Here's the difference, though. Gonzalo Higuain was totally healthy and still playing as a laggard when he was walking up and down the pitch thinking, uh, I'm going to the MLS. This is a terrible league, and he was embarrassed. My, my God, they pushed him down like he was nothing yes. on Tuesday but night. Kyle oh, Lowry God. is because of a definitive injury. No one is doubting. This is not a made-up injury. This is not a cover-up. We've seen it. We saw it when it limped off the court in the Atlanta series. So this is different. So it's a matter of can you avoid the soft tissue injury and – Kyle's always told us this from when this started. This is my first soft tissue injury. So you know what? Maybe this is a one-off. Maybe this isn't the guy, a hamstring again, a groin again, and then you realize the guy is either not stretching, not in condition, or his body is saying no more. Let's hope this is the one-off because Kyle Lowry could not have gone this far downhill in a season to where he was out there on the court on Wednesday night without a point, without an assist, without any impact. By the way, we have 13 insiders on this platform. Sean, I just want you to know that. This is the only insider that I can make a Gonzalo Higuain analogy and he'll pick up on it. You know, <laughs> only Ira is the one <laughs> on, out of all 13. Maybe, you know what? Maybe Clay. Is there, what do you think? Does Clay know anything about yeah, soccer? I, 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 th I think Clay. I think Clay. Clay. Is schooled yeah. enough. He's more. He's more of a Breck Shea guy, which is why I doubt Clay. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> My God, the, the and classic he throws a Breck Shea line that is awesome because he's the classic MLS player who would not be good enough anywhere else, and instead he always has another season somewhere. Come on, <laughs> surfer dude. That is fantastic. That was awesome. All right. So tonight, is it about mucking it up? Like they did in that first half. That's like their only shot, right? You know what, Big O? Last game, Boston only scored 93 points. Anytime you could say to yourself, I'm going to hold the other team to 93, you have to feel good. So I would put it this way. If the game is in the 90s or the low 100s, the Heat will have a chance. If Boston is good enough to break out and do 115, maybe 120, it's over. The Heat don't have the weapons. They are not weaponized right now to play at that level. So this has to be in the slop. So, folks, if you're watching the game and it's 2019 after the first quarter and it's 51-49 at half, probably you should feel good. If it's 70 to 58 at half, oh, you might want to start figuring where am I going to go watch those watch parties for the finals for another team. And we'll be back with our season-ending report next week. Yeah, I don't think that he can win a shootout. I don't think they have enough right now to do that. And they have to hit a three. Eric Spolster told us oh, yesterday in his media yeah. session, he said, our guys are ignitable and that's fire. Fine. But you have to have that match strike. You have to have someone to get it going. So when I'm asked, who's the key to the game tonight? I know Jimmy's huge. I know Bam is huge. But to me, Max Struess or Gabe Vincent or Duncan Robinson, one of their ignitable three-point shooters. If you see them make a pair of three-pointers early, great. If you don't, if at the end of the first quarter, we're looking at the box score and the Heat is one of six on threes, be concerned. Be very concerned. Ira, uh, we'll wrap it up with this off of the heat beaten track here. We'll go out west. Okay. Um, the Golden State Warriors have been able to revive their dynasty. And they're back into the finals now again. And, and there's nobody to say that they can't actually challenge for the finals over the next couple of years. Sure. It's going to become an incredible story now because... That valley that they that valley of 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 all kinds of adversity that they went through from injuries to uh, defections and all that kind and, and some politics uh, mixed in there too and all of that um, they've been able to overcome it. It'll become a pretty special story if these guys are champions again and if they're able to become multiple champions again with that little divide in the middle. Uh, that becomes one hell of a story for that franchise. Yeah, you know what? Is the, the West is not as strong as it previously was. I think the I think the Warriors can That's distance themselves in the West. I think the Suns have a lot of contract issues. They have an older Chris Paul. They have the DeAndre Aiden free agency that's going sideways. So the Warriors are 
very well positioned. The East will be the grind our conference for years to come. Milwaukee's still going to be good. Boston's still going to be good. The Heat are going to be good. Philadelphia is going to be good. Toronto is getting better. The East is going to be the grind. Golden State's really well positioned. Why? Because they stood by their men. Because when everyone says you got to get younger, you've got to get rid of these guys, you got to move on. Draymond Kens, they stood by their guys. I think that's what the Heat need to do. I know these are tough moments. I know Jimmy's been hurt. I know Bam might not be aggressive offensively enough. I know Tyler was off. You have to stand by your core because Big O, the hardest thing in the NBA is to get a core. And so for all these people who are texting you or you know, smashing your like button or saying the Heat have to blow things up, when you blow things up uh, and start yeah. all over again, I've lived the week. Yeah, I've lived the Marlins. I've lived the Dolphins. Yeah, I've lived yeah, a yeah. thousand different incarnations. Stand by your men. Yeah. Tweak. Tweak, yes. Not yes. not not, not you overhaul, know, not rebuild. Uh, you know, I, I think the Panthers need to be tweaked. You tweaked. know, I'm sorry. Perfect. I have tweaked. no issue with that. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I don't think Hubert or Barkov are the superstar that you need. So I think Hubie's the guy you're going to have to move to go get that son of a bitch somewhere. Even instead of having they, four, they, instead you of know having... what the Panthers need to do? They need to be Pat Riley. They need to go find Shaq, and they need to go find Mason, and they need to go find Butler, and, and they need to go find Timmy, and they need to go find Zoe. They need, I don't know who it is because I'm not smart enough on the hockey side to know who's the disgruntled star out yeah, there available. What they need is the disgruntled... They, find that guy. they, they need find the disgruntled son of a bitch who realizes playoff yeah. hockey is different than regular season yeah, hockey. Amen. And at the moment of truth, he's able to stand up to the pressure. They learned a very important lesson against Tampa, and it was a worthwhile lesson. All right. So I, I, I was going to wrap it up, but you led me to something before that, and that was DeAndre Ayton. And I talked about this a couple of days ago, but I haven't had you on since Monday. Right. So the son said, hey, DeAndre, we like you, brother, but you're not a max player. And, you know, I I looked at the numbers. Uh, I went back to it the other day, and Ayton's numbers, he averaged 17.2 points, BAM 19. He averaged uh, 10.2 rebounds, BAM 10.1. Uh, BAM averaged 55% from the field. He averaged 63% from the field. They're basically the same player. Now, defensively, maybe one's a yeah. little better in the interior. The other one's better, obviously. No, Bam is better interior. overall than Aiden is defensively by a lot. No, no, but yeah, because of what he does on the perimeter. Right. What I'm saying, Aiden might be a little better in the interior. Yeah, but he overall, might be a little more stout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he might be a little more stout. But what my point is, they told him, yeah, you're really good, but you're not a max. Is that what the Heat, in hindsight, should have said? No. It's yeah, the exact really opposite good. of what you and you're I just said. Good. It's what I we said is you have to find your core because if you didn't give Bam the max and you let him walk out that door or he wouldn't take less, who the hell, Orlando Alzagari, were you getting to replace him? Oh, uh, no, I, I, listen, again, I'm not I'm not of the ilk of getting rid of Bam. I am of the I am the guy that says stop asking him to be the offensive guy. And that's, that's who fine. He is. And that's fine. <laughs> but what I've also heard from you as I watched the Big O show and I've listened on our Acura Pembroke Pines reports uh -huh. is this is that they shouldn't have given him the money and he's overpaid. Right. He's, not, he's a not, not a match. He's not a match. You know what? The he's not a match market yeah. dictates. There are there are actors, it. there are musicians, there are journalists, there are radio hosts who were overpaid because their outlets, because the people who were in charge realized they couldn't afford to lose them. That's why you're going to see the same thing this summer with Tyler Hero. There's going to be a number that Tyler Hero comes in at, and you're going to go, holy crap, Ira, why are they giving him that much money? Is he a max? Is he a match? And, I'll tell, and, I'll, tell he a you, match? and I'll tell you, Big O, that my answer to that question now, I'll tell you when we talk at Summer League, is going to be this. Okay, who else were you going to get? That's the thing. That's the what, thing. What, what six man is a max? A he hasn't proven he's a max. He hasn't plays. proven that he's a starter. You're going to pay him max? Okay, but he's almost the heat. He was fractions of points from being the Heat's leading scorer. So don't get lost in the role. Consider the overall contribution. That's what I'm saying is salary and productivity are not always on the same plane. You pay what the market dictates and the nba is a really good market right now and you're gonna have to pay the great players in sports get overpaid the grunts get underpaid it's just the way it is so tyler will get his 35 that will get his 25 million while max Struess is making 1.8 because that's just the way it is yeah that's crazy stuff. All right. What do you got uh, on the Sun Sentinel leading up to the game? You know, so I just posted a story um, this morning about how through all of this, the Heat have never stopped developing. 
And so they, you know, they have Javante Smart, they have Michael Mulder, they have Hayward Highsmith. They have their summer league practice team already working. They're there before practice, after shoot around with the coaches, getting as many reps as they want. They're getting ready for that. And remember, at the end of previous season, they had guys like Duncan Robinson, Omar Yurtsevin, Kendrick Nunn, who came in late, you never saw in the playoffs, but they were so ready for summer league and then so ready for the next season. So I spoke to Omer and I spoke to Duncan Robinson and I asked him how valuable are these minutes? And they said, you will see this when the Heat get to Summer League. When the Heat get to Summer League and Orlando Alzagari is courtside, you will see the payoff of all that work that's posted right now at sunsentinel.com. The cycle that's going on now is the cycle they didn't have the last couple of years because of COVID. Because of COVID, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's back on. All right, follow him on Twitter at Ira Heapy. Catch his work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. And, of course, you can catch him on the most complete platform covering South Florida sports right here three times a week. Ira, thank you. Have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you from San Francisco in the NBA Finals next week because you got to believe. Thank you, Big O. You got it. There you go. Ira Winderman. All right, our Acura Pembroke Pines Miami Heat Report. This is the Big O Show.